Well, what I've diagnosed today on this 13.5 Briggs is a bad governor. I can feel it from up top here. See, I got the ground. I can feel up top where I could just keep spinning this. And over here, you see the shaft. It's not moving, but this can move all at once. What was happening was the engine was over revving and had to keep it buried full of snow in order to, you know, try to slow it down. But that was just for a day, trying to trying to win the snowstorm over. But what we're going to try to do is now we have it apart because you can't take it out unless you pull a crank. I don't want to do that. Lazy. But we're going to try to do a little tank weld around that rivet try to keep that fixed and I'm sure that was a shear system so that if it is making a mess of itself it'll just shear off and then you, you know to shut her down but we're gonna permanently affix that rivet onto that plate with weld so converted the torch over to the stubby setup went to a whole 30 or not a whole 30 but 330 seconds tungsten and we'll start off running 40 amps with 30 amps uh, pre preheat. So, we're gonna see what we can do. Got a 35 wire from the MIG. Straighten that out. It's better to keep it straight. And I cleaned it up with some uh, some sort of brake clean, off-brand stuff. So, not really off-brand, but works pretty good. So, we're gonna give her a go. Make sure if you're doing this, you're grounded right to the shaft and you're not grounded to anything else. If not, you can eat out that bushing, which we don't want that, or break the shaft. Put those pock marks, give a shear point, stress concentration, so see what happens. Well, there you have it, nice little TIG weld. She's fixed, she can't move anymore. Got everything cleaned up, you know, good time to get the gunk out. That's set to an arbitrary position out of the way. So when we put it together, we don't fuck anything up. It's supposed to contact that piece there for the governor. And that's, that's how that works there. And then push it down on it. So, get it all together. We'll see if she works. We use some RTV because they don't have time to get the gasket. So, got the ultra black more than what we need. So, this should be enough to do it. I watch try not to get too much on the dial things if I ever get to get back in here. So well, there you go. And 40 amp was just a little cold for that size tonks. But still held up, so we'll leave it there. Hopefully she'll she probably will, probably better than factory. So gasket set up a little bit normally I'd butt these bolts out before I do it but I didn't have them with me so I just knocked it tight and it's got dowel pins anyways hold it in place so once that's there now we got to torque it but I try to use a little Loctite on these small engines because of the vibrations they have a tendency to rattle out so and it says the torque spec is 15 15 foot pounds about so not much, it doesn't sound right, but I think that's about right. So we're gonna trust it and then we're gonna go from I believe we'll just go from here back up to here, 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 and then here. That'll be torque sequence on it, so should be close enough. So put her back together. Uh, after everything's torqued down. I went through probably three times and made sure everything settled, but sometimes it takes a bit for the gasket to displace inside of it. So now to set it, it's kind of awkward, but you take in your carburetor, you make sure it's on full throttle, and you push this arm over. 
A uh, spring, if you tighten up a spring, it'll do the, do the same thing, but I'm just using my fingers. You can take a 3 16 socket, put it on the head. Now, it doesn't take much force, but you turn it clockwise. So where it bottoms out on the other side was that. The other side right there was the governor assembly on the internal side. You want that bar to try to push that in there. So that's why you got the 3 16 on that governor shaft pushing against that governor. Now it's full throttle. You torque this one down here and you should be all set. And the spring goes to the fifth hole. But you could have more throttle response by if you take and move it up a few other holes. You could control your throttle response that way. So, so even though I hopefully won't have to come back in here again, by that point I'll throw the motor away. But if I do, these pulleys have a long keyway in them. So you're lucky if you get them all off. Anyways, but if you you know never sees it saves you <laughs> they're long long keyway in there but to take the crankcase off i never showed it but you have this harbor freight puller i use that at some points just to get the pulleys off but somewhere but either way they have these little bolts in here they can thread into these two holes kind of the right way would have the right bolts, but these are kind of close enough to thread in. Now there's one here, there's one on the other side. And all you do is just put the fork puller, wherever the hell that went. Either way, you just put the puller on it and this whole thing will just slide up, put a bearing on that shaft, or the threaded part, and just pop this whole crankcase off of there. Well, even though the spring was set in factory specs, fifth hole, I found out, see I already test run it once, that as soon as I was hitting the snow, she was kind of bogging out, which means there's not enough tension to counteract that governor. So, taking it off is pretty simple. You got the two, two bolts on that block out, and then the four tank bolts you can see on this side, you can pop that off and then you get right back to that governor just try to jump one one spring hole at a time that should help you with your throttle response and hopefully she'll run good this time if not another spring up so we'll see a little surgeon i might have to take the idle up a little more but it's also cold too so i'll let it run a bit just to see should be all right 